My name is Alex Pott. I am uh, one of the now many uh, Drupal 8 core committers. Um, specifically, I'm a framework manager, so that means I'm responsible for kind of the technical architecture of Drupal 8, making decisions about um, what we're going to do going forward and, and reviewing a lot of the work that contributors, the volunteers and, and, and people uh, submit to Drupal.org for improvements to, to our, our great open source uh, code base that's called Drupal. Yeah, in the past, I, I've, I've, my, I've only been doing like Drupal, uh, Drupal maintenance. I, I was really lucky from 2013 to 2017 to work 100% of my time on, on, on core. Um, when I began doing that, uh, I, I sponsored myself. Um, and then gradually the community started to help me and a couple of companies came in and helped me. Then chapter three employed me full time um, until uh, June 2017, at which point I've been working on court then for um, five years, pretty much full time, and I was a bit tired, so I took a, I took a three month break, and then I and then I came back, and now I'm actually working uh, for myself, and I contract for <coughs> two companies, one called Acromedia, which is an e-commerce company based in Canada, and I also work for. Thunder, the, the distribution for publishers, and I get to spend like equal time, amount of time on both. And they both allow me to contribute to Core, but it's, it's not 100% of my focus. I also help them with their products and their open source code. Don't be afraid to fail. Um, you're gonna make, you, you're gonna make mistakes. I, I still make lots and lots of mistakes, but I learn from my mistakes. And but the great thing about doing it in a community like Drupal in an open source fashion is that there's going to be a lot of other people around there who are going to be able to help you learn and show you better ways. And then when you learn, you're going to be able to share that experience with everyone else, and you grow through sharing that experience. So it's it's really about for me like getting involved was about getting over that that first step of being in public and not knowing something. Um, we can't know everything. I don't know everything about Drupal Core. I, I might know a bit, quite a bit because I have <laughs> reviewed a lot of the code, but I can't know, it's, it's impossible for one person to know everything. And, and, and to be honest, my, my brain can't keep it all in. Like I, I, I shift context the whole time. And in order to, 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 know, to learn about the next thing that I need to know about, I have to ask people, I have to get out there and go, I don't know about this, can you tell me? And, and, and so that's, you know, that's, that's a good way of starting. And, and the thing about doing it with open source is that there's so many people out there who are willing to, 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 uh, to work with you and, and, and to learn from. And then, and then you get the, the, the fun of sharing that experience with everyone else. Um, and when, when I did it, when I, when I made that jump from like just look, downloading Drupal code and just being a kind of a, a freeloader, um, I, was, I was working for a small company owned by a university and I was building like little little websites for them, and I was just taking Drupal code. And I was going, I want I want to learn a little bit more about this. I want to contribute back. Um, uh, I was able to like join uh, IRC, which is a internet relay chat, and I was just sitting there watching the the channel and learned a lot from just watching people. Now in in Drupal, we we have kind of two online places to go and go and learn from. Uh, there's there still is IRC, but there's also Drupal Slack. And so if you just Google for Drupal Slack, you you'll see how to join the Slack channel. And if you come and if you come and join the the hash contribute channel there, you can watch like the, the work go on, and you, eventually you can like, build up the confidence to ask a question, and you'll find that people will be there to to answer it. It's it's, it's kind of amazing um, that that happens. But it, it, it happens even to this day. New people join that channel, and they they they, they go. Oh, can you can you help me with this first issue? And then you start helping them, and they learn, and they contribute, and then before before you know it, they've they've had their first patch in core, and they're they're on their second, third, fourth, fifth, and it starts. Well, I think I think um, if we if we look at Drupal Drupal eight um, progress, one one of the things that like marks it out from previous versions, previous core versions of Drupal, is the amount of experiment experimentation in core. Um, and I think the, the upcoming release uh, in, I think it's next week or the week after, of Drupal 8.50 is, is, is one of our most exciting releases ever. We've got a whole load of new uh, experimental functionality that's becoming stable. So 
um, what's stable in Drupal 850 is content moderation. So you're, you're able with content moderation that allows you to create future revisions that aren't yet published. Um, it's a really big win for a content management system. Uh, we've got media has become stable in core, which, which means that we're finally moving towards like a proper media library in core. It's not there yet. What, what, what the media module is, it just provides an, uh, uh, the, the, the beginning of that, but um, it's exciting that it's that it's that it's now stable. We've also got uh, the the migrate API is stable, so that's about moving data from other systems into Drupal, um, upgrading from Drupal six and from Drupal seven. Um, that's 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 going to be possible. Yes, the migrate Drupal migrate Drupal UI modules are still in beta, but if you've got a a site that's not multilingual, that's in Drupal seven or Drupal six. Getting your data into Drupal 8 should now be quite should be, should be quite easy. Um, and there's one more module that's stable that has slipped my mind. Oh, uh, yeah, it's settings tray. Uh, settings tray is about the, the user experience, um, user admin, the administrator user experience. So uh, as you uh, navigate around your, your Drupal site, there's a uh, there's the settings tray which allows you to kind of administer blocks on the page. It's kind of a block in place editor. Um, so we're, we're concentrating on, on those UI improvements. What am I really excited about in the future? I think um, the the initiative that's that, that I think w that we we need to succeed is what's currently kind of called the JavaScript modernization initiative. But I think in the future it'll be it'll be known as um, something around the admin UI experience, the ability to improve our uh, admin experience with like modern JavaScript. Uh, Frameworks like React is going to be key for our adoption because at the moment, if you if you start up Drupal and you go into the admin UI, we just look quite old hat, um, and and the user interactions that we can build out through like our current approach to admin theming feel very clunky and they don't feel like the way that people want a modern application to feel. And so I'm really excited for like Drupal having a great admin UI that when people like start up, they 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 get to the admin UI and they feel empowered to be able to create great sites with great content that look fantastic. Um, but yeah, we're not we're, we're moving in that direction, and the work that the that initiative is going to going to do in the next in the next few releases, oh, yeah, I'm excited about that. I think in the last last years, I, I've tended to um, like pop along to the Drupal camp um, that's in London because it's where I live, so it's it's like kind of easy to come here. Um, it's on a weekend, which can make, make it interesting if you've got child if you have a child. Um, the, the other events that I tend to go to are the, the, the Drupal cons, either the American one or the European one, or, or, or dev days. I think what for me that's nice about, about Drupal Camp London is that it's like really small and accessible and you can generally talk to pretty much everyone that's here, you know, the, the hallway track's good um, and you get a really good, uh, uh, good, good amount of speakers, there's a lot of, there's a lot of sessions on, you, you're never like at a loss for, for you know, what am I going to do for this this bit of time? There's, there's there's always stuff going on, so it's good, and the social's good. So, yeah, oh, right. I, I like it. It's it's you know it's it's not like it's not like a DrupalCon, but it's 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 a it's a friendly and and well-run camp.